Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to take a look at meiosis and crossing over. Now in order to understand crossing over, you have to understand meiosis. Um, crossing over is actually something that happens during meiosis, so that's why you need to understand what goes on in meiosis. Um, so first let's go ahead and take a look um, at some background information to understand meiosis. So uh, in order to create a diploid cell, you actually have to start with two haploid cells. So here's an egg plus a sperm. Okay. Now the egg and sperm are always haploid. So what I mean by haploid is this. So to represent chromosomes in the mom's egg, I'm going to use red. So here's a chromosome in the mom's egg. Here's another chromosome in the mom's egg. Um, this is not a homologous pair. So that makes the egg haploid, because um, if these were a homologous pair, they'd be the same size, same shape, with genes in the same place. But they're not. You can tell just by size alone. Okay. Um, so eggs are always haploid. The sperm, this is from the same species here, uh, is going to have a matching chromosome for each one. So from the dad, I'm going to do a long one and a short one. Okay. Now, when these two cells come together, this egg is a cell that has chromosomes inside of it. This sperm is a cell that has chromosomes inside of it. When these two come together, they form a diploid cell called a zygote. This is the very first cell that's going to divide to form future body cells. So when these two come together, you get the chromosomes from your mom. There's a matching pair for each chromosome for your mom from your dad. So those combine. And then here are the short ones. One from your mom that came from the egg and one from your dad that came from the sperm. Okay. So this is how we create a diploid cell, by combining two haploids together. Very specific types of haploids, egg and sperm. So when you, you combine egg and sperm, you create diploid cells. Now this is different from making copies. This is actually creating a diploid cell. You have to have two haploids to create a diploid cell. Now if you want to make copies of this, then it'd have to go through mitosis. Mitosis is how you uh, make copies of um, diploid cells. So to make a copy of a diploid cell, uh, this cell would go through interphase, it would grow bigger, uh, S phase would make a copy of all the chromosomes, and then it would split into two cells that look exactly like this. So at the end of mitosis, if this cell went through mitosis, you'd wind up with something like this. Okay, so this is how you create diploid cells. This is how you, mitosis is how you make copies of diploid cells. Now, with meiosis, you start with a diploid cell. But now, instead of making an exact copy of it, we want to create haploid cells. We want to go in reverse. Now, that doesn't mean by going through cell division here through meiosis that I'm going to turn this into the egg and sperm again. That's not what it means. It means creating either sperm if you're a male or creating either eggs if you're female out of this diploid cell. So how do you go from a diploid cell to creating a haploid cell? Okay. Well, it would look something like this. The whole point of meiosis, I'm going to put meiosis over here. The whole point of meiosis is to create these haploid cells, and the easiest way to do that is to separate the homologous pairs. So meiosis is all about separating the homologous pairs. So let's say we're creating sperm here. If I was to separate the homologous pairs um, to create haploid cells, let's say I take this one from my mom, um, and the whole point of meiosis is to separate the pairs, so I take this one and I put it in here, and I take this one from dad and I put it in here. Now, 
I don't have to put all the ones from mom in the same and dad in the same. So I'm going to mix these up. So I'm going to say I'm going to separate this homologous pair. Again, that's the point of meiosis. Separate the homologous pairs. Uh, I'm going to put the one from dad in here, the little one from dad, and I'm going to put the little one from mom over here. So you can see here, I've created haploid cells. And all I had to do to go from this diploid to this haploid was to separate the homologous pairs from each other. And I was able to create two haploid cells. Okay. Now, separating the homologous pairs like this is actually called the law of segregation. Okay, now if you think about what segregation means, um, especially in American history, uh, in segregation you had um, a separation. Segregation means to separate. Okay, so segregation in American history was uh, black people had uh, their own drinking fountains while white people had their drinking fountains. Black people had their schools while white people had their schools, stuff like that. So that was segregation. So here the law of segregation is saying that in meiosis, homologous pairs have to wind up in different sperm or egg. Um, so you can't have a homologous pair wind up in the same sperm or egg. That's the law of segregation. Homologous pairs have to separate during meiosis. They have to wind up in different sperm or egg. And that's exactly what we see happening here. The homologous pairs have separated into different sperm or egg. All right. Now, there's a problem here with this example. At the end of meiosis, we don't just create two cells. We wind up creating four cells. Okay. So why is that? So let's take a look. So why do we go from two to four? So if I start with my diploid cell again with the chromosomes from the two parents. Okay. Well, when this cell is going to go through meiosis, it makes a copy of every single chromosome. So you wind up with this. Copy stay attached at first. Copy stays attached. Uh, one's from dad, same thing. We make a copy of it, stays attached. Copy of it, stays attached. Okay. So if we just simply try to do what I did on the last example, where it split into two sperm, it wouldn't work. So what happens is instead of splitting into two, two you wind up splitting into four. Okay. And this could be sperm or egg. Eggs go through, um, to create eggs, you go through a similar process in females. Okay. So here, the law of segregation. says I can't have homologous pairs in the same sperm or egg. Okay? Um, so looking at these, you can see there's one, two, three, four chromosomes in this homologous pair right now. One, two, three, four chromosomes in this homologous pair. Okay? Um, so uh, what happens is during meiosis, this copy will wind up in one sperm this copy will wind up in another. This copy from dad will wind up in one sperm. And this other half, this copy, will wind up in another. Okay, So that's how we wind up creating four instead of just two, because we made copies of the chromosomes. So same thing with the little ones. This, cop this half right here will wind up in, I'm going to randomly put these, will wind up here. This other copy, let's say it winds up here. This copy from dad say it winds up here, and let's say this copy winds up here. Okay, So we followed the law of segregation, and we made sure we didn't have homologous pairs in each of the sperm. Uh, and we also followed another law, and that's called the law of independent assortment. This says that when you separate all these, they just randomly separate into the sperm or egg. Um, so homologous pairs can't be together in the sperm or egg, um, but the, you can actually mix the parents' DNA when you create your sperm or egg. So you can see that actually happened here. So that's a law of independent assortment. All right. So. Going from here to creating these four haploid cells, that's what we drew in class. So we actually said, okay, 
how do you go from here to there? That's meiosis. So that's this right here. So going from a cell that's diploid, it makes a copy of all the chromosomes. Uh, chromosomes condense. Um, the homologous pairs line up in the middle. You separate them into two. So we're going to separate right down the middle here. So it'll look something like you separate right down the middle. And that's going to form two different cells, which you see right here. Okay. Um, so at the end of the first four phases of meiosis, we've separated the homologous pairs from each other. Then the second four phases, well, here we're not done because we have a problem. We've separated the homologous pairs. We've followed the law of independent assortment, but we have a problem because we have copies attached to each other. And we don't want copies attached. You always want to pull those copies apart and put them into separate uh, cells. So during prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, uh, to the phase 2, this is where we separate the sister chromatids. We separate the copies from each other. So they condense, they line up in the middle, uh, the copies get pulled apart, and when the copies get pulled apart, these cells are going to pinch in two down the middle here. So that's going to divide in two, that's going to divide in two, and you wind up with four different haploid cells.